And Republican Senator Orrin Hatch just had a private meeting, a one-on-one -on -one with President Obama. Why? The inside story from Senator Hatch. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to see you. All right, it's nice to be in your office, but you haven't been here all day. You took a little road trip to the White House? I was down in the White House today, yes. I spent a half hour with the president, one-on-one. -on -one. What were you meeting with the president about today? Well, he wanted to chat about uh, the potential Supreme Court nominees and uh, the potential uh, hearings coming up and so forth, so I, I was glad to do it. Do you have the sense that he has someone in mind? Did he name anyone to you? Well, first of all, I was honored to have him invite me down. And he did go over a number of names, but, you know, I think, uh, I, I, think I should keep that confidential until, until the time comes when he makes a choice. Well, I guess it makes sense to have you come down, um, and Senator Kyle was with you as well? No, he, he it just was one-on-one. On one, yeah. Just, I, I just the two of us. There's nobody else in there. Uh, he, he did have a photographer at the beginning, but didn't hear anything. All right. Um, and I take it that uh, the whole point was about the Supreme Court, or were there other topics as well? Well, he, we discussed a number of things, but the Supreme Court was the main, main focus. Um, Times Square, that suspect, what's your thought about, uh, about how this has been handled and whether the United States uh, is safe or not? Well, I get a kick out of how the Justice Department people were, you know, pounding their chests, uh, claiming they'd really done this. Uh, the fact is, they didn't know this man. And uh, th if that fellow had not been an idiot, uh, in other words, had been better trained, uh, there would have been a tremendous, tremendous problem there. And a lot of people would have been killed. So it just shows how difficult this is. But we've got to watch. He was uh, certainly Pakistan Taliban. He was claimed he was trained by them. They claimed that he d that they trained him. And they claimed that he was trained and he tra claimed he was trained in Waziristan, which is a very, very rough place that we're not allowed to go into uh, over in the Pakistan area. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he was uh, somebody who uh, somehow or other we've got to figure out how they're getting these people to join up with them. Because, uh, you know, they Mirandized him, which I always find stupid on the part of our people. Now, he was a citizen, but uh, you don't have to Mirandize. You just can't use uh, any statements that he says in, in a trial. But the important thing is to get the intelligence. Fortunately, after Mirandization, he uh, apparently has opened up and been telling him a number of things, and, uh, and, and that's good because he waived uh, his Miranda rights. At least that's what I've been told. Is there anything we should do differently to protect ourselves? Well, we know that he kept coming back and forth and that uh, was away for weeks at a time, months at a time in some cases. We found this out. We ought to be watching these people. I mean, you never know. Uh, and what really gets me is how these uh, young people can be uh, sucked in by the, uh, by the Taliban and by the Al-Qaeda people. You know, we were lucky in the sense that, uh, you know, we're lucky that, the, of course, that the bomb didn't go off, but there was a point when, he, when surveillance lost him. That wasn't good. Right. But there's also a point where he was put on the no-fly list, and there is a lag of time before it actually, the airline sort of connects on it. Um, I stick my credit card in the gas tank at, the, at Amoco or any other gas station. Instantaneously, it, it can take money out of my account. Why can't we tighten this up because he could have gotten out of the country. Well, it ought to be tightened up and there, it's inexcusable that we didn't, uh, we didn't have that, uh, that situation tightened up. Uh, y you know, we got to get real about this. There are, there are people who are out to destroy our country and to hurt people and to kill people and they don't value human life. The fact that he almost got away on a plane I think was abysmal. Fortunately, we were able to catch him. The fact that they missed uh, you know, missed it on, uh, on their computers, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty doggone abysmal. I, I guess the thing that's sh sort of shocking to me is the fact that, and I, I don't know the mechanics of trying to, you know, implement a new system or get a system going, but on Christmas Day, we knew a lot of the defects in our, our security that was made right. abundantly clear to everybody in the world who's watching. I would have thought that aspect of instantaneously updating the no-fly to the airport would have been done, you know, forthwith. And I'm surprised to see that gap, and so I wonder what other gaps there are. I don't want to be overly critical of, about our military or our intelligence people because it's a tough job. It's very, very difficult. But neither should they be beating their breasts and saying what a wonderful job they did because uh, there was no way uh, that they knew who this guy was and, uh, and even tried to interdict him uh, before it happened. And I suspect there are other people in our country just like that. Uh, it's been predicted by the head of national intelligence. Uh, I was there when he said that I expect we'll have some terrorist incidents in our country within a, I think he said, three-month period, if I recall it correctly. But we know that there are people who are trained by them, who are fanatical, who are willing to kill themselves. 
They're certainly willing to kill others, and we've got to do everything in our power to make sure that there's no American that goes through that type of uh, Holocaust experience. All right, let me give you a quote from uh, one of your colleagues here from across the aisle. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said, uh, Republicans are having trouble determining okay. how they're going to continue Republicans, making love want to. to Wall Street. Oh, I love that kind of comment because uh, Wall Street has supported Democrats right down the line. And, uh, and the president, by the way, uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars. The fact of the matter is, is that they're the one who want this, uh, what I consider to be a terrible uh, regulatory reform bill. And, uh, and, and they're the ones that are pushing it. I got a big kick out of Lloyd Blankstein, who was honest when he said, uh, you know, the head of Goldman Sachs, he said that the, uh, the Goldman Sachs and others on Wall Street are going to benefit from this bill. They're the ones that are going to benefit from it. And I don't think he was joking about it. They will benefit from it because they know how to make money. They can take a bad situation and make it into a very positive money-making machine for them. Uh, they're very, very brilliant people, slick people, good, uh, good at doing what they're doing. And let me tell you, the Democrats are the ones that uh, didn't do anything about Fannie and Freddie. There isn't even, Fannie and Freddie aren't even in this bill, and yet everybody acknowledges that it's just a bomb waiting to explode because of the, the, the costs involved and the monies that they're indebted on, the toxic uh, mortgages that they've taken, the big bonuses that they've paid, paid their people over the years. I mean, one man got almost $100 million in five years from a quasi-governmental organization. I mean, come on, there's something wrong with it. Well, it, it, was, it was, Fannie and Freddie had been used as, uh, as uh, Democrat Party sinecures, in other words, places to park their people so they can make a lot of money and get, get wealthy after they leave uh, government. And uh, that's happened a lot. Now, there have been a few Republicans involved there, too, but nowhere near like the Democrats. And all I, for, to make a comment like that, maybe I'm going on too long here, but to make a comment like that is, uh, just shows the cheap politics that we're putting up with today. And I like Harry Reid. He's a friend. We, we care for each other. But he shouldn't have said something like that. But Harry does uh, make some very outrageous comments from time to time. That's why we all love him so much. Think he wants a do-over or you think he stands by it? I think he'd do it over if he had a chance. The uh, fact of the matter is they're trying to blame everything on Bush. Have you heard that? Why we inherited all these problems. Look, there isn't a person who's ever created a job in the White House around them. They're all bureaucrats or academics. Now, that isn't bad. The bureaucrats can be good people. Academics are brilliant. Some of their academics are brilliant. But if they ever created a job, do they really understand what's really going on in our country? And, you know, to sit there after they've taken all this money from Wall Street and uh, after they failed to do so much uh, against Wall Street and against the things that were excesses on Wall Street, sit there and try and blame Republicans, uh, I don't think the American people are going to buy it. And I don't think they're going uh, to allow that type of, uh, that type of co uh, comment uh, to, be, uh, to be acceptable.